BlackBerry will point you to the fact that this device is the same size as an actual passport. Hence the name. At least it is in terms of width and height. It's still over 9mm thick, but at 90.3mm wide it's clear that this is a two-handed device. And that's not a bad thing. It gives ample room for a large physical keyboard. But make no mistake, this device is beautiful. Its glass front, matte black keys, metal chassis and frets give it an incredibly classy look. It's well built and solid. And what's more, all the buttons have a great click. Nothing about it feels cheap. Even the matte finished back feels great in hand. Or hands, as it is in this case thanks to the smooth texture and curved sides. Unlike many Blackberries of old, the battery isn't removable. The only part you can take off is the top panel on the back where the micro SD and nano SIM readers live. The glass panel on the front gently curves towards the edges, matching the curves on the edge of the keyboard. Metal accents and black matte plastic and curves just meet everywhere to create a device that looks brilliant. Anyone coming from an Android or iOS device will find the shape a little unusual. But you can't deny the craftsmanship and quality of materials, and how they've been put together. If we talk about that keyboard, I've already published an in-depth look at the keyboard, and in short, it's a three-row, 29-button physical QWERTY. Each of the rows is divided by the trademark metal frets, and each button is large and tapered, making them really easy to type on but I can't help but feel that an extra row is needed. For the obvious punctuation marks, numbers and shift keys, you have to rely on a row of virtual keys on the bottom of the display. And trying to type switching between virtual and physical keys is quite confusing to the senses. One second you've got a really nice resounding click, the next you've just pressing a bit of glass with a fake sort of clicky sound. Still, typing is accurate, and the built-in touch sensitivity is a cool innovation that lets you do all kinds of things, like deleting words and selecting phrases and all other manner of gestures, including scrolling through lists and web pages. But let's deal with the elephant in the room. This is not a device designed for media consumption. BlackBerry never made it for that, so to kind of judge it based on that is a little bit silly. And the display kind of makes that very clear. It's a 1440 by 1440 4.5 inch square LCD display. Viewing videos or playing games isn't very good on it because it doesn't take up much of the screen. Or it cuts off some of the content on the sides. But browsing the web, editing documents and reading emails is world class. You just seem to see much more of the text on the screen at once without having to zoom in and out or scroll lots of times through the list to get the whole picture. It's 453 pixels per inches, which means that it's really sharp. Text is nice and crisp and animations are smooth. Viewing angles are good too, although it does have a tendency to make whites a little pinkish when you view it at certain angles. The BlackBerry Passport comes shipped with BlackBerry OS 10.3, and that comes loaded with all the stuff that we know and love about BlackBerry 10, plus a few extra bits. It's now got BlackBerry Assistant, which is the company's attempt to take on Siri and Google Now and Cortana, but it's not quite as fully fedged or reliable. It's great for messaging, emails, finding out weather and directions to various locations, but when you're trying to find out information about, let's say, sports teams or sports players, the information can be either old or just not there at all. But for me, more important than this is that BlackBerry has tried to deal with the whole ecosystem and lack of developers by incorporating Amazon's App Store. You can install any apps available on Amazon's App Store and load them on your device. Now, some of them will scale quite nicely, like Facebook Messenger works pretty well. But once you try playing games, because of the square display again, you'll find that some of the content on the edges will get cut off and you don't get the full picture. But some, again, work quite well. But for me, one of the best things and most important things about BlackBerry's operating system is always the efficiency and the way you get around it. It seems to be really quick and productive and intuitive. 
using the gestures to swipe in and out of different menus and access various points. And that leads us quite nicely onto performance. And for the most part, at least with native apps and the general user interface, it's really quick. The 2.26 gigahertz quad-core Snapdragon 801 processor makes light work of pretty much everything. Apart from third-party apps, particularly from the Amazon App Store, they have a tendency to lag at times or they just don't open up smoothly or they just take ages to load up or they stutter when you're trying to move around in them. That said, internet pages run quickly and fairly smoothly as do all other elements of the user interface. It does seem really quick and snappy. There's no extra animations to make it look nice like you may get on iOS, for instance. And battery life is good too. It comes shipped with a 3450 milliamp hour battery and that got me through two days of use on a full charge and that was regularly with pretty much every cycle. If you're a heavy user you should at least get a day to a day and a half use on this device. And the stereo speakers on the bottom ensure that you don't miss any notifications. We'll briefly touch on the camera, we won't make a big deal out of it because it's a Blackberry. The camera is not really a big show for a BlackBerry device, never has been, it's just nice to have one there. Now this one's a 13 megapixel sensor and it's pretty good. It's got HDR, optical image stabilization and an LED flash and results are decent. Although trying to take them with a square screen isn't the easiest, it's still colours and sharpness are good in daylight and it does pretty well in low light too, although you do tend to see some noise and graining cropping into your images if it gets a little bit too dark. On the plus side, it also shoots 1080p at 60 frames per second, but what I will say is that focusing is quite slow, especially if you're trying to focus on an item that's quite close to the camera. As an overall wrap up, if you're someone who loves gaming, watching movies and shooting video or having the latest and greatest apps, this is not the device for you. That's clear, you should know that before the review. However, if you want an efficient, reliable device with a great physical keyboard, solid build quality and great battery life, then the Passport is the best device on the market.